Hello, so today we're going to run through the adjustments you can make during a custom firing. Um, so first things first, it's always important to know that you can press the stop button up here in the top left corner at any time and that will end your firing and take you back to the idle screen. Um, the next thing to note is that we have the edit button right below that. Now the edit button you can use to make changes to the program. Um, so if you push the edit button, now you can see each segment of our program right now. We've got a custom, it's user 11. Um, so you can see that segment 1 right here is grayed out and that just means that that segment has completed so you can't make any changes because it's already done. Now segment 2, um, we've our ramp rate has completed but now we're in our hold so you can change the temperature for the hold if you want. It's at 600 right now. You can change the actual hold time itself um, and you can make any changes to segment 3 and 4 because they've not completed yet. So let's say we want to make a change to the segment we're currently in. We'll change it to 610. Press the save button press save and now you can see our set point down here is 610 now instead of 600. So another thing with the edit button, we press that, we can also press the graph button down the bottom right hand corner. And this just gives you a graph of the current firing and where it's at and where it's supposed to be going. So first we've got the orange vertical lines throughout with numbers below them. That just represents the segment of the firing. Then there's the green vertical line here that we see, and that is the current firing time. This represents where the firing is at currently, as in relation to the graph and where the firing is at. Then we've got the gray vertical lines here with white numbers. That represents the time at various points throughout the firing. So this firing should take over 12 hours because our last time here is 12, but we've got more hold time after. Then we've got the green line of the graph and that represents the firing's actual path and as you can see the green line meets up with the yellow line and the yellow line is the projected path of the firing. Now if you do see any red lines you can't really see them right now um, but the red line represents the firings where it was supposed to go and the green line represents where it actually went. So the yellow line will actually turn red if your actual firing does not meet up with the projected firing. Now your horizontal gray lines with white numbers, those represent the temperature for the firing. And then you can see down here at the bottom right hand corner, we can see what the kiln's current temperature is. So we're at 607 degrees right now. Okay, so now that we've looked at all of that, we can hit the back button and hit back again. We get back to the firing screen. Now there's a couple more things we can see here. Um, you can see the kiln's current temperature here is 608 degrees. Uh, the remaining hold time that we've got is 22 minutes out of that hour. And then we've got a set point of 610 degrees. And you can see that we're in segment two. Now if you ever want to see the temperature for your thermocouples, you just press on that and it'll show you the uh, thermocouple temperature the percentage to the elements, and the set point. And we'll click that back. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we can press the adjustment button, so the ADJ. So we press that, um, then we've got some options here, so we can either add time, add temperature, skip step, or we can change the alarm temperature. So the first thing is add time, we press that, and it adds five minutes to our hold time. So we were at 21 minutes, now we're at 26 minutes to our hold time. And that is only effective when you're in a hold. If you're in a ramp, up or down, that will not make no difference. It won't make any changes at all. So next we'll push the adjustment button again. And then we can press the add temperature button. So the add temperature button, that adds five, five degrees to your set point for that hold segment. So as you can see now, our set point is at 615 degrees instead of 610. Again, this only works during a hold segment. You cannot do it during an up or a down ramp. It won't make any difference. Another thing with the adjustment button, we can press skip step, and that will skip us on to the next segment. So if we want to do that, we press skip step. Now it asks you if you go, want to go ahead and confirm this. Skip to segment 3. Click confirm and now we've skipped to segment 3. So you can see segment 2 has been grayed out because we've skipped ahead and now segment 3 
is in white because now we're that's where we're currently at. Okay, final thing with adjustment, we can scroll down to the alarm temperature. So if you want to set an alarm temperature so it doesn't go over a certain temperature, you change it. Right now we've set to 2400, um, but say you want to turn your, air, your alarm temperature off, you type in all nines and press save, and now um, the alarm will not go off. Okay, and then lastly we've got the menu button. So if we press the menu button, we've got a couple options here. Um, we've got statistics here at the top, so this just gives you the statistics from the last diagnostic test that you've ran from the kiln. So then we hit back. Um, if we press the diagnostics button, this will run a manual diagnostics test. You can see it says check all at the top of the firing banner. And then one other thing with menu, we can change thermocouple offsets. So if you want to change thermocouple 1, 2, or 3's offset, you just press on the temperature, type in 10 or whatever temperature you want to add or, or subtract, press save, and now our thermocouple offset's been changed. And press back, press back again, and now we're back at the main firing screen. Now if we want to stop the firing, like I mentioned before, we just press the stop button. And as you can see, we head back to idle and the kiln should begin to cool down. That's it for now, so remember to check our website for updates, like us on Facebook, and sign up for our e-newsletter for more information. Thanks!